What is owner's equity? That is our third element. We said there's five elements of accounting. We've got assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And these three are all related. And they're related because of the definition of owner's equity. And it is, it's a little bit confusing, but we're going to simplify it. But we'll say the official formal definition is, it is the owner's residual interests in the assets of the entity after deducting all of its liabilities. So that's quite a mouthful um, and very, very complicated. So we're going to try and simplify it. So first of all, what does this word residual interest mean? Well, let's take it back to a real simple example. Example: You and three friends want to buy a pizza. So you're going to go quarters in it. Assume you're going to share it equally. The pizza is going to cost $20. So you each put in $5. The friends give you the money they give you. So you've got the full $20. You have to run and buy the pizza. You do it, you come back, and then you're going to serve each person their slice. We can look at a business the same way because a business is really just slices of a pie. And it's all about who owns what. So in this case, friend one is entitled to a quarter of the pizza or $5. Friend two, that quarter. Friend three, that quarter. And that quarter there will be yours. So together, we've got a full pizza. So when we think about it, the pizza itself is kind of like an asset. We've dealt with assets and what they are. That is an asset, $20 asset. But from your perspective, you can't eat the whole pizza when you pick it up. Why? Because it's not yours. $15 of that pizza belongs to other people. You kind of owe three slices. You took the money, you got the pizza. Uh, it wasn't your money, so you kind of owe three slices. That's what we would call liability. So I guess what we're saying is your residual interest in the pizza is really only this quarter slice here. And that's kind of like saying your residual interest in the asset is only $5. That is what your owner's equity would be. It's not the whole pizza. It's your section that you own, your residual interest in the pizza. Bit confusing. So it's represented by what's called the accounting equation, which might help to simplify it in this lesson and the next lesson. But we say assets will always equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity of the business. So just going back to our pizza, what is the asset? The asset is a pizza. It is worth, there's four quarters. Each quarter is worth $5. That's worth 20. From your perspective though, you owe three slices of that pizza to other people. So the, uh, the three slices are five, five, and five. That's a total of $15. So really your residual interest in this asset is only the $5 that you're entitled to. And that's how business works. So owner's equity can, you can also sort of think of it a couple of other ways and say it's really what the owner owns of the assets of the business. Or another way you could put it, you could say it's what the business owes the owner. So let's just look at an example, but make it more business related. Let's say Matt wants to open a business called Matt's Mechanics. He needs $100,000 to start the business. So what he does is he saved up $80,000 of his own money. He's going to give that to the business. And he's gone to the bank and borrowed $20,000 on behalf of the business. So now the business has its $100,000. So its assets must equal its liabilities plus its owner's equity. So the business now together has a hundred grand. That's an asset. We're going to call that asset cash or cash at bank. However, it owes $20,000. That is a liability called loan. And so the residual interest in the assets of, of the business for Matt are the difference between those. So in this case, it's $80,000. We're going to call that capital from now on. Your owner's equity is the owner. We write capital and your name. So in this case, Matt. So we've got 100,000 equals 20,000 plus 80,000. That's perfect. That balances. What about this though? Matt now starts the business and he takes $100,000 and he uses it to buy some assets. So this is gone, this 100 grand, that's gone. And he's bought a garage with it, some equipment with it, some tools with it, and some computers with it. So now the business has several assets. They still all come to $100,000. But now, um, let's just say Matt changes his mind and says, I don't want to run a business anymore. I'm going to wind it up. I'm going to end it. Well, what happens when a business ends? Its assets need to get distributed. Who do they get distributed to? Well, the first group of people that it will get distributed to are the people that uh, the business owes money to. So in this case, the bank is owed $20,000. You could also think of that and go, well, Matt is the owner. He is also owed $80,000 in this case. Um, in the first chapter, we looked at the entity principle. Matt and the business are separate entities. The business owes Matt $80,000 as well. All right, so how's this going to get split up then? Well, just with the mass, it's probably going to be easiest then if the liabilities, they will always have first claim on the assets of the business. So when it is wound up, so what's the bank going to ask for? Well, it's not, it's only entitled to 20, so it's not going to ask for the garage or the equipment. It's going to have to take the tools 
and the computer. Now, Matt will get what's left after liabilities have been deducted. This is what the business owes Matt. And he gets what is left now once these liabilities or what the uh, liabilities here have been deducted. So in that case, that's 80 grand. So Matt is going to get the garage and the equipment. And we can see a business really owes two groups of people money. It owes other entities like the bank. And it also owes the owner, in this case, Matt. And together, that will equal your assets.